So the Asian flu of 1956 killed between 1 to 4 million people worldwide. SARS in 2002 infected 8,098 and killed at least 774 in 17 countries. H7 and 9 emerged 10 years later to strike at least 1,223 people and kill every 4 out of every 10 of them. Now the milder yet more infectious corona or COVID-19 has sickened and stricken at least 100,000 people across the globe and resulted in the lockdowns of China, Italy now, and even South Korea declaring war on the coronavirus with the death toll at almost 3,000 worldwide. But do you notice something? All of these outbreaks originated in China. But why and why is China a hotspot for novel and even new um, respiratory diseases. So there's no big mystery or no big conspiracy or secret to why this is happening. Lots of people in China are concentrated into one major city or scattered very vastly around the rural areas of China, like Hubei, Shenzhen, Jingdao, Beijing, Shanghai, those big cities. And with a large concentrated population, there's lots of species as well in China, like camels, oxen, pingolins, penguins, oxen, hawks, and even red-tailed foxes. And these animals have potential reservoirs for other diseases other than corona or respiratory diseases like Ebola and even SARS and even MERS. And these animals that are sold in these wet markets dead or alive do not have great hygiene or hygienic cleaning to them. It's really a recipe for spitting out all kinds of viruses and diseases and even bacteria. South Central China in particular is noted as the missing vessel for viruses. There's lots of livestock farming, especially in South Central China and even Southern China near Pyongyang or North Korea. There's lots of livestock farming in, of course, rural China and particularly there are poultry and pigs and even exotic animals, but mostly chickens and pigs with limited sanitation and very lax oversight and when they go to the wet market when the various birds and mammals and even reptiles uh, are hosts for viruses that can jump species and rapidly mutate and especially even cross contaminate and cross species themselves into humans and even potentially infecting humans right so experts are actually pretty sure this is precisely what really happened there are sources that they're a bat suit, but that is a bit racist. But there is a myth to the legend as traditional Chinese medicine, which we'll get into as well as a major factor for the spread, is often noted as saying, eat a monkey brain, get smarter, eat a pingolin penis, have the urge to sex drive. But I guess in the pursuit of sex, that person has done messed us all with no condom. You know, there's more explicit words, but... Christian friendly dude. So this is one of the reasons and this actually led to on the 30th of January, China issued a temporary ban on the trade of wild animals like really wild like oxen, well not really oxen but really exotic wild animals like MERS which is from camels, Ebola from bats, reptiles, Komodo dragons, all that kind of stuff. So. No more Komodo dumpling soup for you, Yong Shangwa. Many Chinese people, even city dwellers, insist that the freshly slaughtered poultry is tastier and more healthier than the refrigerated or frozen meat, which is partly true, but not the best when the guy doesn't wash his hands and probably uses dirty water anyway. Mandeling Lu for the Smithsonian writes, The public taste for freshly killed meat and the conditions at live markets create ample opportunity for humans to come into contact with these new mutations that can cross species jump into humans. Moreover, when stricken with illness, many Chinese first seek out traditional Chinese medicine or TCM, which practitioners and practitioners regularly misdiagnose symptoms and even give them the same things that are making them sick like the monkey brain and stuff like that. Then it would offer three steps. One would be acupuncture, or ineffective herbal teas or herbal drinks like um, ginseng and green tea or even the same animal based remedies as treatments that you tried on yourself but that pingling penis is too much for you. This drastically increases death rates during the outbreaks 
This drastically increases death rates during outbreaks and allows infectious individuals to return to public where they can infect more people because they think they are cured. But incubation is not done yet. One of you TCMs or traditional Chinese medicines, which are posted in China, have already have already misleadingly promoted an unproven liquid comprised of honeysuckle, Chinese skullcap, and weeping fostrina as a treatment for COVID-19 or coronavirus. China is also notorious for its misinformation, secrecy, and censorship, which rises the chances of the new diseases which will fester faster and even spread faster as misinformation must be stopped before this new disease. Back in early January, Chinese government officials told the public that the new infection spread had effectively been halted, which was wrong. This was not true. And at the same time, the authoritarian regime bullied health experts who attempted to sound the alarm. The young doctor, Li Wenglai, attempted to warn others about the coronavirus. He was rewarded with a threatening reprimand by police. And Li subsequently caught COVID-19, supposedly, and succumbed to the disease in the first weeks of February. Rest in peace, Ling Ling Wai. Now, there's actually a conspiracy saying that the Chinese government not, not really gave him COVID, but let him succumb to it by pulling out his um, support system. There are some hopeful signs that China is doing away with some of the secrecy that hampered global response to prior outbreaks, especially SARS in 2002. The government is now sharing more information and more data than previous outbreaks, and Chinese scientists are actually publishing a great many papers, assembling and assessing and with ease to global accessibility in global communities. Still, it remains seen how or if the country will institute policies meant to prevent future outbreaks. Now, so there are a couple of ways to this. I don't agree with all, but permanently banning the sale of live animals at public markets, yes. Instituting and enforcing food safety regulations and code, yes. And discouraging the use of traditional Chinese medicines are options that should be on the table. Why I don't really like that is because some traditional Chinese medicines actually work. It's just that, you know, you can take them after you're diagnosed and not before you're diagnosed. So if you're sick with the flu, the doctor will be like, okay, you have the flu, take some ginseng and take some herbal tea, do not eat fingerling penis and you should be good. Without the countrywide action, it is nearly certain that China's 1.4 billion citizens will once again be exposed to novel and dangerous infectious disease for many years to come. But now, what are your thoughts on it? Corona spreading too fast? Italy is now on virtual lockdown. England has four deaths and it is now, well, in our backyard, I should say. And Brazil is in our south and Dominican Republic is in our north. So we're pretty much squeezed in. Um, tourism is down. Of course, people don't want to go anywhere. So there's not just the um, biological aspect to this disease, but also the economic disease, the economic potential of this disease. Um, I'm going to be okay though. I'm going to be okay. Um, it's going to be hard, but remember, wear your face mask, buy up some Purell, and we'll get through this all together. Save some snacks for me, boys and ladies. Now, this is not the first time we were on the brink. Um, we do have better medicine than the Black Death. So I do feel we should take these measures because um, we live in the age of science and though Lord Almighty will help us through. We are still going to need some, some um, earthly medicine to get us through. So um, if you'll be a champ and um, say in the comments, um, how is your area handling coronavirus? Um, that would be pretty cool. I don't know if who will be on this. I guess who will be at the top because a lot of commentaries, especially China Uncensored, have said that their videos are having who which are actually kind of corrupt i mean if i want to be from the ethiopian communist party and flying around in private jets worth 1.7 billion dollars yeah i would do that i would join who immediately um but also um this article was read by me but it, it was not written by me so i i never claim any of these articles as mine you all know that but i'm just i'm not a scientist i'm not a dermatologist i'm not an ecologist I'm not a, a practitioner of medicine, I'm just giving you the facts, giving you some reasons why, because um, in the 70s, China really was having a hunger strike. They were eating, basically think of China as today's North Korea, but the whole country, instead of a couple of prisoner prisons in the north, very north of North Korea, I know that's weird, in the very north of North Korea, yes, 
But anyway, um, yeah, so there was people who eat the rats and... So, what do you guys think about it? Is it enough? I don't know, I just got interrupted. But um, remember guys, wear your face mask. And just try to keep your social distances. News Wuhan Shake. Oh, I think I was talking about I'm not a practitioner of medicine. Yeah, I'm not a practitioner of medicine. I just deal with the history and um, the reasons behind certain global topics. And also, this is being used as a geopolitical game because now Japan is losing tariffs on South Korean goods. Um, you know, there's a bit of World War II history with them, you know, post colonial stuff. But um, Africa is going to be hit pretty damn hard if they don't. St they do have Ebola stuff in place, so that is good. But um, will it be enough? Because you have to actually cough up blood before you get Ebola. Um, you, you pretty much have to be showing symptoms before you're infectious. Um, but COVID-19, you don't really have to be. You could be on the airplane the whole time. Get off, Siri it on, you're good. So um, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. I might do one more segment quickly, but I think that's pretty much it. That's pretty much me. Anyway, guys, learn something, stay safe, and remember, keep hydrated. And remember, if the global apocalypse comes, have your coffee. Because I'll trade it in for that 2002 Nissan. Trust me. Anyway, guys. Um, Wuhan, Jailao. But five meters apart. <laughs> five meters apart, Wuhan, Hubei. So back in early...